Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I've got a full review to do for you. I meant to do a first impressions on this one, but I got too busy and kind of missed the boat, and then by the time I had time to do it, it wouldn't have really been a first impressions anymore. So we're just going to go ahead <laughs> with a full review, and uh, if you're watching this today as it goes live, happy National Knife Day. I uh, was not prepared for this holiday. I forgot that it was even a thing, frankly, and so there's nothing special happening here other than another knife review. So I picked up this knife on a trade recently, and I actually got pretty lucky. This knife was certainly worth more than what I was offering, but I was looking to sell the knife. I ended up trading for this, and the guy who wanted that knife really wanted it and just had this available to trade and was willing to take the loss to get me to trade instead of sell and it just it worked out fairly well um and so shout out to that guy because <laughs> this is a really cool knife that i've gotten to experience that i had seen the i'm gonna call it the valaton the whole time because i'm not sure if it's valaton or viaton or what <laughs> um but i think it's valaton so i have seen these quite a few times um, I feel like I had a buddy who got one a ways back. He had the one that had been converted to be an automatic, um, which is pretty cool. Definitely takes it to another level. Um, but I've seen these in photos and I've always thought they were intriguing and just different. And being somebody who's admittedly kind of a Spyderco fanboy and I like a lot of what Spyderco does, I just like checking out the unique and intriguing and different Spydercos that exist. Um, so getting the chance to check this one out has been a lot of fun. Frankly, I like it more than I thought I would. And it breaks a lot of my rules <laughs> or a lot of my preferences. It doesn't actually fall within. But I posted a picture of it the other day and I said something in the description about it having character. And I think that's ultimately kind of why I've found that I like this knife a lot. Um, I've had a couple of people explain some of the history of the people behind this knife. Unfortunately, the designer of this knife passed away relatively recently. Um, so that's, that's a bummer, but what a cool thing it would be to be a knife designer and have people remember you through your knives. I think that's a cool thing. Anyways, that's not the part of the review, but worth saying, I think. So let's talk construction first, and then we'll talk some of the things that I've found out about this knife as I've carried it. I've used it a little bit. I have not been hard on this knife. A, because it's not really the type of knife that would fall into like the type of knife I'd grab for hard use tasks. Not that it's not robust or anything like that, but it's just not, like if I'm, if I'm gonna go to do a hard task with my knife, this isn't gonna be what I'll reach for. So anyways, we have a three and three quarter inch blade of CPM S30V. Um, it's obviously a, quite a different shape for Spyderco. Um, it's a nice saber grind with a hollow primary bevel, I guess you'd call it. But then out to the tip, there's a flat grind. So it's technically a compound ground blade. And it's almost Tanto-esque the way that it does that, but it's not a Tanto. Um, I think it looks really, really cool. We've got a flat up here, and then the way that the hump protrudes is just rather different for Spyderco. I feel like usually they kind of leaf shape it and have material carry out through here, but they really just, like, it just bulges for the hump up here, which is kind of cool. It also has external blade stops, which is not something that I think I've ever owned a Spyderco with. It's not something that you very really see often from Spyderco. So this one seems to have a lot of character from the original designer compared to some Spyderco's where even when they collaborate with a designer it still feels very Spyderco. This one almost feels a little less Spyderco than normal to me. So S30V, it's a thick blade stock, thicker than a PM2 for sure. I think I saw online it was like 0.16. Um, it's a robust stock of S30V. What's cool though is it does get quite thin behind the edge. I've cut like a couple of packages open with this and each time I've been like, wow, this thing really, it cuts quite well. Um, so I like the hollow grind here. Um, Spyderco has been guilty of using some pretty thick blade stocks and then doing a flat grind and like my Paysan, that was one of the biggest gripes that I think people are right about <laughs> on that knife. It's just very thick behind the edge, thicker than it certainly should be or needs to be in my opinion. And if they had done a hollow grind like this, 
Uh, it could have been much better because this is a thick blade stock and it's not a super tall grind but they've still gotten it pretty thin by having a nice fairly deep hollow grind here and then to keep more material out to the tip by doing that flat grind up there for that last little bit it not only is it functional but it also I think looks really cool to have that compound look up there anyways our handle construction is going to be black G10 which is polished it's totally smooth there's no grittiness to this whatsoever, but it's got this really cool kind of like almost wood grainy look to it, the way that it's contoured and ground. It looks really classy to me. It almost in some lights kind of looks carbon fiber-esque, the way that you just kind of see the checkering in it. Um, I think it looks great. And then the this construction of the handle, I believe this is all stainless steel, but we've got these bolsters up here, which if you look, the way that the bolsters are constructed, there's like a bolster kind of overlay piece and then that piece is ground out and you get more black G10 set in there. So it gives it this really cool bolster design that just feels unique to me and different, not just for Spyderco, but in general, to have this bolster set on up here, but then have part of the bolster milled out so you can set more of the handle material into the bolster. It just, it looks cool and it has a, a rad vibe to me. The liners themselves are hollowed out a little bit. There's some internal milling or drilling um, where they've done some weight relief, but it's not super extensive. And this knife is quite heavy. It feels hefty in hand. And it's on top of feeling a little bit heavy. It's just really thick. This is a thick knife. And I think that's kind of the, the <laughs> main sense that I get of it every time that I carry and use it is just how thick it is. It's a, a very thick knife in pocket, in hand. You can't really get around the thickness of this knife. And then even the blade stock feels very thick when you put your hand up in a saber grip and I put my thumb onto the, the spine where the jimping is and it feels, it's a thick spot to put your finger. You can tell that everything about this knife is not trying to be slim or trim or lightweight or any of that. Um, it is a liner lock, so you can see we've got a pretty sturdy liner in here and uh, the detent is set there into the liner and it looks really good everything about this knife has a really classy like the all the black and satin coming together and having like the stripe of black across the bolster and all of it just flows really well to me the liners have this nice kind of shine to them everything appears to have they like took some extra steps to just make sure the satin was finished well everywhere on here and it looks really really good to me um, the backspacer is going to be more of that same polished black G10. And then the clip that you get on this guy is a pretty traditional, in fact, very traditional Spyderco style spoon clip, but it has been coated black with kind of a satin spider. I think that was the right touch. It looks very good on here. Um, I prefer deep carry clips. And the good news is on this one, if I wanted to throw a deep carry clip on it, it's a standard Spyderco clip so I could put pretty much any aftermarket Spyderco clip onto here and it would function. Um, I might have to do longer screws just based on, I don't know, actually, maybe. <laughs> but the hole placement is correct. It's the right style clip. Um, it does have a lanyard hole for those of you who care about that. I do not. So take that for what it's worth. Um, so yeah, those are our materials. Like I said, the main thing, the main sense that I get of this knife is just how thick it is. The way that it fills the hand, it's just, there's no getting around how robust this handle feels. It really fills out the hand. It's not uncomfortable per se, um, but it's it feels different <laughs> than any other knife in my collection. The thickness feels the most similar to me to like the Spyderco Subvert which I had not that long ago, the Danger Banana. That knife was really thick, and this knife feels about as thick as that. This knife doesn't feel quite as intense in terms of like the blade on that knife was just ridiculous. This feels much more kind of stabby and slicey and um, functional as a blade shape, I'll say. And I have found, like I said, when I've cut with this knife, I've always been really impressed with how it performs. The grind is done excellent. Um, the way that I grip this knife almost all of the time is a saber grip and it's kind of an intense saber grip the way that 
my hand cants onto it. It's just, it feels very kind of forward, like thrusting motion-esque. It's like, um, I recently reviewed the Microtech SOCOM Elite, and that knife feels very much like it's meant to be in a saber grip and to do piercing, stabbing motions. This feels much like that in the sense that my hand naturally goes like this, and my arm wants to follow it in a line. Um, just a little bit different from most knives. Again, it feels less Spyderco and more like this designer had a lot of say <laughs> in how this actually came together. Like it's really his design and just kind of happens to have a hole in it. Um, let's think. My main gripe with this knife, other than that it's really thick, which means it's a little bit thick to carry, it's a little bit heavy in pocket, it's kind of unwieldy because of its just size. My biggest gripe even beyond that, I think frankly, is just gonna have to be the way that the lock bar, the liner lock, is a little bit proud, right in that foremost finger groove. For me, it's uncomfortable. It's not the worst in the world. It's not even what I would consider like a hot spot. It's not painful, but it's uncomfortable. And that's like the way that my thumb presses here in a saber grip, my finger, like I have the most pressure right here with these two fingers. The rest of my fingers are just kind of following along and keeping the rest of the knife in line. But all the action is happening right here. And the way that that, regardless of how I place my finger in there, I just really feel that liner lock bar. And I get why it's that way in terms of to be able to disengage the lock. It needs to sit at least a little bit proud or they'd have to like do some hollowing out in there so you could access it. And it's not jimped or anything. So it like from a design engineering standpoint, I understand why it's proud there to function as a lock bar, but it seems to me like they've neglected the ergos of one of the most important spots on the knife ergonomically to make it disengage better. And that's a balance that I've seen go wrong in the other direction as well. I've seen other people set it in too deep and then it's a real bummer to disengage and that's a problem too. I've seen other people try to tackle that by putting really aggressive jimping on it and then it's like it's hurt. It, even if you can access it, it hurts to actuate it because it's like saw teeth on your thumb. Um, so again, understand what happened there, but I don't like it. I just don't. It doesn't feel good for my finger. If this finger groove didn't have that, this might be one of the more comfortable knives in hand that I've held. Um, it just really fills out the hand well because of all that thickness and the way everything is smooth and the, the contours and curves actually fit my hand well, it could be much, much better if that tab just wasn't, wasn't sticking out like it is there. Even if they just match the curve a little bit better or something. I don't know. It just, it doesn't feel good. Um, so yeah, I think those are really the only things that I'm not super fond of. Is It's a little heavy, especially in pocket, with how thick it is. It's not the worst to carry. I've carried it as a primary a couple of times front right pocket, right where my primary goes. I like that the clip is four-way positionable so I can carry it, tip up, right hand, just the way I like, comes out of my pocket, it deploys well, it's got multiple deployment methods really because it has these external blade stops which function as thumb studs and it has the hole and I just, I like fidgeting with this knife, it's fun to play with, it rides on washers but it's very smooth. Um, but yeah, it's really just the size and weight make it a little cumbersome when it's actually in pocket. You just really feel that it's there all the time, and then it's that, that lock bar. But the things that I really like are also very, very important. The way that this blade cuts, it's really shocked me. It's very thin behind the edge. And it gets thick relatively quick with this hollow, but I found that, I don't know, just the way that it comes together, um, let me see. The way that this goes through material for such a thick blade stock, it just cuts really, really well. And when I've put it through soft materials, it feels precise because, I don't know, just the shape of it or the way it puts my hand, I feel like I have good dexterity over it. It, it, it surprised me in how well it cuts because I was not thinking 
that this knife was going to be such a fantastic cutter. <laughs> in fact, if you would have asked me before I ever had this knife in hand what I, the way I thought it was going to go, I would have thought that ergonomically looking at this handle, it would be super comfortable, but that it wouldn't be a very good cutter. And what's funny is that because of the lock bar, the ergos are not perfect for me. They, they're a kind of a weak point now because of that spot there. And the blade is the strong point. Like it's a really excellent at cutting in my experience thus far. I haven't done super extensive testing with it, but each day that I've cut it, I've uh, the, each day that I've carried it, I've made a point to do several cutting tasks with it, whether it's as minimal as opening packages or um, whether it's specifically to test putting it through some cardboard. I've cut some zip ties with it. Um, I did a little bit of paracord just to see how it went. I haven't tried to be super rough on this knife for a couple of reasons. Like I mentioned in the very beginning, if I'm reaching for a hard use knife, a hard use spider coat. I'll grab my Shaman. Um, I would rather use the Shaman for hard use tasks than this, or even a PM2. Um, and then in addition to that, I'm probably going to be trading or reselling this knife. Just because I don't know how much it really will get carried at the end of the day. It's kind of like my Danger Banana. <laughs> the Spyderco Subvert I loved experiencing. I was really glad I had one for a little bit. It was a fun knife and really cool. And this is also fun and really cool and different and intriguing. And I like the way it photographs. I think it looks cool. I like when I show it to people. It's an intriguing knife for regular people who aren't even knife guys to look at. Um, it has a certain presence about it that is fun. But it's pretty big and thick in pocket, which to me is not my favorite thing. Especially if it's not a knife that I plan on having as like a hard user. Like... I have a ZT0308. I actually still need to review that knife. I don't know how I, have, how I haven't done that yet. Um, but that knife, for me, is like a beast of a hard user. And this feels every bit as big in the pocket as that knife does. And if I was going to go do a hard use task with a big, heavy knife, I'd pick that one over this one 10 times out of 10. This just doesn't have the sensation like that one does. So as much as I think it's fun and different and cool and exciting, the way that I collect knives, I don't usually keep fun and cool and exciting. <laughs> I usually keep functional, um, unless it's so radically exciting that I can't bear to part with it. But usually if it's this level of fun and exciting, then it's like, I'm really glad I got to experience it, but I'm probably not going to keep it. And I think that's the case that's happening here. So. For that reason, I've tried to not be overly brutal on it. I've kept it in, I would say, honestly, the same shape that I've gotten it in. Still wearing a great factory edge. There's no scuffs or scratches anywhere. Um, if there are any snail trails on the stainless steel liners, there's like a tiny scratch that was probably there when I got it. I don't know. I've been very nice to this knife. Um, but I've enjoyed it. <laughs> and I think that's fair to say, and that's the most honest way I can put it, is that this is one of those cases where I'm really glad I got to experience a knife, and I have n no regrets about trading for it. Um, in fact, I'm very, I'm happy that I did, um, but I don't think it's a forever keeper for me, and there's a lot of knives that way, and that's just the way that I exist in the hobby. So, for a lot of people, I'm sure they would love this knife, and its character would be something that would make them keep it. For me, it's just not quite enough. But I'll let all of that be that. I think that'll be it. I think that's my full review of the Spyderco Valaton. I, uh, I've enjoyed my time with it. And so now it's time to send it downriver and let someone else enjoy their time with it. <laughs> that's the way it goes. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you taking the time. And uh, this was an interesting one. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one.